All right, in section 2.5, we're going to take a look at some transformations of graphs. Might bring back some memories of geometry. Um, but we see here at the top, I've got some parent functions. And parent functions are like the most basic of a certain type. And so you see the first one, we have an absolute value. So just the most basic absolute value is absolute value of x. And you can see the, the, uh, what the graph of that looks like there. It's a v-shape. Next to that, we have the square root of x. And so what that is, is just half of a sideways parabola. y equals x squared, that's a parabola. And then y equals x cubed. And it's a little bit like taking a parabola and like rotating, I guess I would do the wrong one, rotating the one side down. One side's still kind of going up like a parabola, the other side's going down. It's a little bit like that. Um, and so we've got those parent functions. Those are just the most basic, and we're going to compare some functions, some graphs, to those parent functions today. And so, different transformations. We're going to take a look at some translations first, some reflections, and then some dilations. So we'll start with some transformations. That's like we can just slide left, right, up, or down. And so what I'm going to uh, point out here on this first equation we have just the x squared. That's like one of our parent functions. It's like the parent function up there. Except we have a number added to the end. It's a plus 3. And so what we see there is it is a translation of just this parent function. But the plus 3 at the end, what it does is it shifted the graph up 3. And so x squared was a parabola, but we just lifted the parabola up 3 units from where it was before, and that gives us our new graph. Um, let's see a couple of other of those shifts. Um, on the next one, square root of x minus 2. So I took a number at the end. This time I subtracted instead of adding it, and you can see that it shifted your graph down two units. The next one, we do a minus 3 at the end, and once again, that's going to shift it down 3. It was an absolute value, but the absolute value gets shifted down 3. And so we kind of, after that, we kind of change gears. But on those first three problems, we were adding or subtracting numbers at the end of the function. So I did the x squared, and then I added 3. I did the square root of x, and then I subtracted 2. I did the absolute value of x, then I subtracted 3. We change gears now on the rest of them, and we add or subtract, but we do it inside before we've actually done that operation. So for example, in the next one, I take the 1, I subtract it from the x prior to squaring it. When that happens, when, the, when we subtract 1 inside of the parentheses, it becomes a horizontal shift. But you'll see here on these horizontal shifts, it goes the opposite direction of what you might think. When I see x minus 1, I might think left 1, but it's actually going to shift it to the right 1. And so you can see our picture, and we would have had us at x squared, but we shifted it to the right one unit. And the next one, it's a cube instead of a square. We've got x cubed, but inside prior to cubing, we add 2 to the x, and so that's going to shift the graph left 2 units. And then in the third one there, inside of a square root, I have an x plus 3. So I didn't add the 3 at the end, I added it inside the square root. And so that's going to shift it left three units. Okay, so those are different translations, shifting left, right, up, or down. And we'll get some practice on this in today's section. But let me point out some reflections. Reflections are going to happen when I put a negative in there. And so I'm going to point out that on the first one, I put the negative before we get to the absolute value. And on the third one, I put the negative before we get to that operation of x cubed. Notice what happens in both of those cases. The graph got reflected across the x-axis. So if your x-axis is the horizontal one, you're flipping it like, you know, upside down to the bottom. So it kind of is upside down. And we see that on the first one. It wasn't a, an absolute value. An absolute value is normally a v-shape. But when you flipped it across the y-axis, or the x-axis rather, it became an upside down v-shape. And the third one, we had the x cubed, or the right side was going up, left side was going down, and we reflect it across the x-axis and the switch places. 
So that's what happens when I put the negative in front, not inside of the operation. But now in the next two, or the other two rather, let's go to highlight. I don't put the negative in front, I put it inside of the square root, and I put it inside of the cube. In those two cases, we get reflected again, but it reflects across the y-axis. So that's, you know, left to right, to right to left. So you see, we have normally a square root it goes this direction, but it got flipped across the y-axis, you know, so it's going the opposite direction. Same thing over, over on the, the last one. Normally, x cubed goes this way, but it got reflected across that y-axis, so it's a little bit backwards here. Some problems, like a square root, uh, sorry, I didn't mean a square root, um, yeah, uh, I meant to say a square. If I took this square and I, I reflected that across the y-axis, it ends up being the exact same thing. Sometimes you do reflections and you don't notice it, um, but it just depends. Okay, so those are our reflections. Um, and the last thing is dilations, like a multiplier. And so you can see sometimes we put a multiplier in front of the function. In front of the function. Oops, a lot of things to highlight there, sorry. Um, if I put it in front, what it does is it gives us a vertical, either a stretch or a shrink. Depends on the size of the number. If the number is larger than one, like it was in the first case, a reasonable player of two, it's going to take the graph and it's going to stretch it vertically. So it would have been a problem, but it gets stretched upwards. You know, so if it would have originally been like this, and I stretch the whole thing up, you know, in this case it's double. You know, I stretch it like that, and it ends up looking narrower than it would have before. And so that's what a vertical stretch does, is it looks more narrow. In the second case, I put a, a fraction in there, or a number less than one. If it's less than one, it's actually not going to stretch it. It's actually going to shrink it. And so it flattens it out. It kind of compresses it, if you will. Um, and so the absolute value the V shape normally would have been going like this, but you can see it's been compressed or flattened when we have the vertical shrink. That's what happens when it's like a one half there. Um, and now on the last two then, we take multipliers, but this time it's inside of um, the function. Let me try that again. So it's not outside, it's inside, and so the graph behaves differently. Instead of a vertical shrink or stretch, it becomes a horizontal shrink or stretch. So when I put a, a 3 inside of a square root, um, 3, it's, it's actually backwards of what you would think here, again. So 3 doesn't actually stretch it if we're talking about horizontal. It actually shrinks it. So when we put a 3 there, we're going to have a horizontal shrink, so it's like compressing it this way squeezing it in. So that originally, um, let me grab my pen, originally on a square root it looks like this, but when I compress that horizontally, it ends up looking, you know, more like that. It kind of looks similar to a vertical stretch. A horizontal shrink is really similar to a vertical stretch. You'll see that there. Um, and then on the next one, uh, the number happens to be less than 1, so it does the opposite. It's going to stretch it horizontally. And so this x cubed normally would have been like that, but it stretched it out horizontally. And that is the same thing as if I compressed it vertically. It would have the same effect. Okay, so there's our, our different trans transformations. Some translations, some reflections, some dilations, based off of where I put numbers or negative signs, and also the size of the number. Uh, we're going to look at some problems where we apply that now. So in this next section, it says, write the equation of g of x. And so in A, I want g of x to be the same shape as 
f of x equals x squared. So we could say that the x squared, that's like my parent function. That's the parent function I'm using. So we know we're going to deal with x squared. And I want to shift it down 3. Well, if I go back up here, when did we shift things down? And actually, we had one right here that was shifted down 3. What happened? We took the parent function and we subtracted 3 at the very end. So let's go and apply that here. Um, I'm going to write it in a little bit funky at first, but if we get used to this notation, it'll help us. There's some, some problems that use this notation on the website, and hopefully you'll be a little bit more familiar with it. So if I want to shift down 3, I'm going to take the f of x. Now, before I worry about putting x squared in there, I'm just writing it in terms of f of x. We have the f of x function, and we're shifting it down 3. And so we saw that to go down 3, we put a minus 3 at the end. So we can show this notation that just shows it how it, you know, how it compares to f of x. But then what I can do for my final answer is replace f of x with what f of x equaled, and that was x squared. So I get x squared minus 3. So g of x equals x squared minus 3. That would be my answer. Okay, the second problem. So now our parent function is x cubed. But first, I can write it in terms of the f. I want to reflect it in the y-axis. When did we have reflections in the y-axis? We had a couple of them. What did we see in both of those? We had negatives inside of the operation itself. This one might actually be the problem I'm doing that's an x to the third, and I think that's what we have there. But I want to put a negative inside of the function. So, to show that I'm putting the negative inside of the function, instead of writing f of x, I would write f of negative x. So I'm putting a negative inside there. So now, let's go ahead and substitute in what the operation is. It was an x cubed. But I'm substituting in the negative into that, so it's a negative x to the third power. There's my function. Try that again real quick. Number or C, letter C there. Our parent function is an absolute value this time. Ooh, we have three things going on. We're shifting left to two. We're shifting up one, and we're reflecting across the x-axis. Okay, so if I'm going to shift up one, I'm going to start with that one. That's when I would put the plus one at the very end, not inside of the function. To go um, left two, I would have originally said x minus 2, because on that one we do the opposite of what you would think. Oh, I said minus 2. I should have said plus 2. X plus 2, because that's where we have to go the opposite. So that's what left 2 looks like. But then, because it's also reflected across the x-axis, make sure I get the negative in the right spot. Where did we have reflections across the x-axis? That's when we put a negative in front. Not in the function, but in front. So I can slide a negative in front of the f of x here. So that shows all three of those parts. So now, if I take the f of x out of it, it was supposed to be a square root, or sorry, an absolute value problem. So negative, absolute value of what's in the parentheses, x plus 2. So that's going to go inside of the absolute value. Close it, and then a plus 1. There's the answer. Now in these next couple, we go from a graph, and we have to write the equation. So I'm going to first observe what, our, what type of parent function we're dealing with. OK, so look at the shape. If we go back to our parent functions at the very beginning, we see that it's this shape. Um, so that was a y equals x squared. Or maybe I'll call it f of x equals x squared.
Let's think about what transformations have happened. Looks like it's shifted a bit because, let me go back up to the x squared up here on the parent function. I'm going to point out a couple of things. The starting point is at 0, 0. It also goes through the point 1, 1. It would go through the point 4, 2 if that mattered as well. But think about 0, 0 there as being the starting point. This one is starting 2 to the right, so it's shifted right to 2. And it's shifted up 1. It would be nice to know if it has any sort of stretch or shrink, horizontal or vertical. And so, to, to figure that out, think about kind of the rate at which this one went. It went from our starting point, we went up one, one to the right. And we've got our next point. Or we could go up two, four to the right. Let's see if that rate has changed as we look at this problem. So from my first point to my next point, notice we went up one, one to the right. Um, up two and four to the right would actually be off of my graph. So I can't tell it for sure, but I can see it right away enough. And just in that much, that it, that it has not had any sort of stretching. And it hasn't been reflected. Um, so no dilations, no reflections. So that's it for my transformations. So then, let's put this in terms of, we'll call it g of x. So, if we write it in terms of just the f, a left-right shift goes inside of the function. So we went right to, that's going to go inside the function. And the right-left is the opposite sign. It would seem like it should say plus 2, but it'll be a minus 2. Okay, that will move the graph right to, and then I want to go up one, so at the end I would put plus one. And so now my last step is to take out the f and replace f with what type of problem we're dealing with. It's an x squared. So I want to square whatever's in the parentheses. So my parentheses were x minus two. So I'll take the parentheses, square it, and then at the end it says plus one. No need to do actually any squaring. We want to leave our answer like that. So that's the equation for that graph. Um, B. So we see that we have a V shape. So its parent function is the absolute value of X. So what transformations have happened? Well... Let's point out a couple of things on the square root. Our parent function, our normal one. The turning point is at 0, 0. And then it goes up at a slope of 1, like it goes up 1 over 1. We can keep going up 1 over 1 indefinitely on the one direction. The other direction, we go up 1 back 1, up 1 back 1, etc. So let's see how that compares to our problem. Um, notice that point is still a zero, zero. So that tells us it did not shift left, right, up, or down. Uh, it is going upside down. So there we have had a reflection. And it's, it got flipped upside down, so it reflected across the x-axis. And let's check to see if it's been stretched or not. We're going down 2 over 1. So it has actually been stretched vertically by a factor of 2. So I'm going to say vertical stretch by 2. If you wanted to argue that it was a horizontal um, com like shrink, you could argue that as well. So that would work, but we're going to probably typically go with a vertical. And so my function. So a reflection across the x-axis, that's when I put a negative in front. Um, and also, the, the vertical stretch is the number in front of the f, so a 2. 
do this by a factor of two. Um, and then I didn't have to put anything inside of the function itself. So simply I used a multiplier of negative two. So my function, when I put it in terms of the absolute value, is negative two times the absolute value of x. And then lastly, I take kind of this idea that we we were just doing. Um, and that problem we took like in, in terms of the f of x and we rewrote it the other way. What they're asking us to do is go the other direction. Take a function and write it in terms of f of x. And um, this shows up on the web assign is why we're spending time on it. But I see... There's a square there, so I know my parent function is f of x equals x squared. And so I'm going to be replacing the x squared with f. So you'll notice before we get to the square, there was this multiplier of negative 1 half. It's still going to be there. And then I get into my square, so now that's my f. But notice inside the parentheses was x minus 3. That's what I was squaring, so x minus 3 has to go in the parentheses. And I don't have to write squared because that's embedded in the fact that I'm saying f. We, we've identified that f needs to be squared. So I put the f there. I don't need to write the squared. And then I do have this plus 2 at the end. I would have to write that. So now I've written that in terms of f of x. And the next one... I see we have a square root. Um, we do have a multiplier out front, so that multiplier will stay out front. We'll have this f. Um, the negative 3 will still go at the end. That part doesn't change. But look what's inside the square. We have negative x. That's what's going to go into the function itself. I've plugged in negative x. So there's my answer. Now that should get you set up where you can um, do the 2.5 web assign hopefully quite successfully. Please be willing to ask questions. You probably will have some in this section so make sure you're asking questions and trying to understand the material well. Thanks for watching.